This is the symbol for an OR gate. We can see it has two inputs. We can arrange for this input to be a zero, likewise this one can be a zero here. We can also have this one a zero and this one a one. We can have this one as a one and this one as a zero. And the final combination we can have is this one as a one and this one here as a one. And in total we can have four possible combinations of input. Let's label the two inputs A and B. And over here we'll write down A and B as inputs. And underneath we're going to write the various combinations for A and B. Well they both can be zero. A can be a zero when B is a one. A can be a one when B is a zero. And they both can actually be one. Let's consider another OR gate. This OR gate has three inputs and the inputs can be A, B and C. Now over here I'm going to write down the inputs A, B and C and I'm going to look at the various combinations we can have with the three input OR gate. Well they all can be zero. These two can be zero while this one's a one. This can be a zero while well, that one's a one and this one's a zero. This one can be in zero while well, that's a one and this is a one. This one can be a one while well, both of these are actually a zero. This can be a one, that can be a zero while well, that one's a one. This can be a one, that can be a one and this can be a zero. And finally, they all can be one. Now if we look at the two input OR gate, we can see there are four possible combinations for the inputs on A and B. And these are the four here, these are the four possible inputs. And if we look at a three input OR gate, we can see that these are the possible inputs. Here we can see we've got four combinations. And down here we can see we've got eight combinations. Now there's a rule that allows us to work out how many combinations we have for the number of inputs to a logic gate. And it's quite simple. You take 2 and you raise it to the power of the number of inputs. So for example, for the 2 input gate that has A and B as its input, it's 2 to the power 2. And that is obviously equal to 2 times 2, which is 4, the 4 combinations. If we have a look at the three input gate, remember it's two to the power of the number of inputs the gate actually has. And in this case, the gate has three inputs, A, B and C, so it's two to the power three. Now two to the power three is equal to two times two times two. And two twos are four times two is eight. So we have eight combinations. Now if I had a gate with four inputs, which I haven't got here, I haven't drawn one, what we would have, we'd have two to the four, which is two times two times two times two, which would give me 16 possible combinations. So when we look at logic circuits, it's quite important to consider the inputs so we can work out how many different combinations of inputs we need to consider. Let's consider a two input OR gate. We're going to label the input A and B and the output we're going to have as F. Now we can represent this as a truth table with my inputs being A and B and the output being F. Now look at the combinations that are possible on A and B. They both can be a zero. A can be a zero while B is a one. A can be a one while B is a zero and they both can be 1. If we now look at the output condition for when A is a 0 and B is a 0, then the output at F is a 0. When A is a 0 and B is a 1, the output at F is a 1. And when A is a 1 and B is a 0, the output of F is a 1. And the final condition is when A and B are both 1, 
and under these conditions the output of f is also a 1. And in fact if we look very closely at f we can see it's a 1 when there is at least one or more ones present at the input. So for example for this particular condition here we can see f is a 1 because this was a 1. At least one of the inputs had a 1. If we look at the next condition here we can see that a was a 1. And if we look at the final one here at the output we can see that both a and b were 1. In fact the only time that f is not a 1 i.e. when it's a 0 as we can see here is when both of the inputs were actually a 0 as you can see there. Now we have a boolean representation for a 2 input OR gate and it's this f is a OR and we have the following symbol for OR when we deal with logic gates it's that symbol there a OR B and that's the boolean expression for a 2 input OR gate now we need to try and memorize this it is vital for us to go forward and memorize the functionality of a two input OR gate and it's quite simple really F is a one when there's at least one one present at the input or another way of looking at it is F is a zero when both the inputs are a zero so that is the truth table here for a two input OR gate and this is the boolean expression Let's draw a circuit as a memory aid to try and help us understand how an OR gate actually functions. Here's a lamp that I'm going to label as F and in this area here I'm going to draw two switches. One's going to be switch A and one is going to be switch B. As we can see there. And over here I'm going to say right let's have a look at A and B for the truth table. And I'm going to say that A is a 0 and B is a 0 because if I have a look at the switches you can see they're both open circuit. Both switches are actually open. Now under these conditions the current would want to leave here and flow around the circuit but of course it cannot because this is an open circuit and this is an open circuit consequently the current cannot flow through this and therefore the lamp here is actually off and we know off is a zero so if we come up here we can see that the output F is a zero now what we're going to do we're going to actually close the switch here close switch B and that would mean that A would be a zero B is closed so it's now a 1 and of course what would now happen the electric current can leave here and it can flow through switch B and can go around the circuit as I'm showing here and it can go back to the battery and in fact the lamp would be on in those circumstances in which case F would also be a 1 here 1 representing the fact that the lamp is actually on. What we can see we've done here, we've opened switch B, but what we're now going to do, we're going to close switch A. And that will mean that switch A is a 1 and B is actually a 0. Now if we consider the current leaving the battery at this point now, it will flow around the circuit because it's going to go through switch A. And it will continue to circulate the circuit, go through the lamp, back to the battery, and of course the lamp will now come on and consequently F will be a 1. Now finally what we've done we've shut switch B and we've closed switch A so both A and B are both 1 and now of course the current can come here and it'll flow through both switches It'll join up here, carry on around the circuit and it will come through the lamp back to the negative and of course lamp F will come on and we know that's a 1. So if we look here now at F we can see that F 
has the same output as that of the two input OR gate that we looked at over here. So this is a good memory aid for us to try and remember how um, an OR gate actually works, so long as we don't take it too literally. And of course, we got this to work because we put the both switches in parallel with one another. And we can see that the output F was a 1 whenever one of the switch or both of the switches were actually closed. So that occurred in these three conditions here. And the only time that F was off was when we had A as a 0 and B as a 0. In other words, when both switches were open.